Well, hi everyone. Yesterday, uh, we I posed the question online on various sites, and here's the question: No man can baptize his fellow. Hold on one second. No man can baptize his fellow man into the body of Christ. Now, is that a true or a false statement? Let me say it again: No man can baptize his fellow man into the body of Christ. True or false? That's the question. Now, the answer, of course. Is true. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13 says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. No man can baptize his fellow man into the body of Christ. This can be done only by Almighty God. Therefore, now let us take a look in depth at the church, the body of Christ, and your denomination. Now there are many church buildings and church organizations on this earth. Many of the people who are members of the different church organizations are also members of God's church. About 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul instructed the spiritual leaders of Ephesus, and he said, Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, 28. Very interesting is the statement concerning God's church. Since the day that Paul spoke to those elders, many members of God's church have departed to be with Christ. Philippians 1, 23. Concerning the apostles Peter and John, we read in Acts 4, 23, And being let go, they went to their own company. This word company suggests their own private group. In 1 Corinthians 14, 23, we read of the church coming together. In Hebrews 10, 25, we read not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So every member of God's church should be identified with other such members of like precious faith and should have a regular meeting place or assembly. But every member of God's church in the matter of church membership should faithfully obey 2 Corinthians 6.14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And every member of God's church should faithfully obey Ephesians 6.18, where it says, And pray with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Church officers may receive from the members of some particular local assembly the right to induct others into that membership. But only God himself can receive a person into his church. That is, cause a believer to be joined to the body of Christ by being joined to Christ. Where it says, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. Romans 12.5 This means, of course, that all saved Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Lutherans, Methodists, Baptists, Congregationalists are members one of another. But it certainly does not mean that all of the members of those denominations are members one of another. No intelligent student of the Bible believes that a person is a member of God's church because that person has joined some denominational organization. But every such student knows that God's way of joining God's church is told in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13, where it says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. No man can baptize his fellow man into the body of Christ. This can be done only by Almighty God. However, it is true that the faith cometh by hearing the word of God, and sinners cannot believe unless they hear, and they cannot hear unless God's saints go to them with the saving gospel to plant and water so that God will give the increase, and add such as are being saved. Romans 10, 12 to 15, and Acts 2, 47. And believers were the more added to the Lord, Acts 5, 14. Now, in Hebrews 10, 10, and Hebrews 13, 12, we are told how sinners become saints, where it says, by the which will we are, um, 
by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. And then, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Then note 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 12, how God makes living saints out of dead sinners, how God justifies and sanctifies believing murderers, drunkards, thieves, adulterers, which is the very same in the case of the believing, self-righteous, moral, religious person. Such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In Titus 3, 5 to 8, this is called by the washing of regeneration, which God bestows. The moment God saves the believing sinner, at that very moment, that individual becomes a saint and a member of the church, which is the body of Christ. And we see that in Ephesians 1, 23, Ephesians 4, 4 to 5, and Colossians 1, 25 to 26. Then in 2 Corinthians 1, 21 to 22, we read that God establishes the believer and anoints the believer, where it says, God who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. In Ephesians 4, 9 to 13, we learn how God is building up the body of Christ, where it says, for the building, up, oh, hold on. We learn uh, how God is building up the body of Christ uh, for the building up of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity or the oneness of the faith unto a perfect man. Now, here's where we got to pay attention. God is very jealous concerning his son and his son's body. So be very careful that you are not trying to build up something such as your denomination in competition with God instead of being laborers together with God in building the one body of Ephesians 4.4. 4. You see, the word church is found more than a hundred times from Acts to Revelation, twice in Matthew 18.17. The Greek word is ecclesia. In the Greek translation of the Old Testament scriptures, this word ecclesia is, is used quite frequently and is generally translated congregation as it is in Acts 19.32 and Acts 19.39-41 where the Greek word is used to describe an, <laughs> an angry lawless mob of heathens. Where the Greek word ecclesia refers to God's church, it does not refer to an assembly room or meeting place but to a company of, of people for the word ecclesia means called out. Therefore, God's church, God's ecclesia, during this dispensation of grace, or the dispensation of the mystery, is composed of believers or saints whom God, by the Holy Spirit and the gospel of Christ, has called out of this condemned world to be joined to Christ as one flesh, to make up the one new man of Ephesians 2.15 and Ephesians 5.21-32. Uh, now, in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, we learn that Christ is going to present the church unto himself, a glorious, spotless, blameless, holy church. And how sad it is to know that many members of church organizations on this earth will not be there. Will you? Okay. Now, in Ephesians 1.13, the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, declares that men are saved and sealed by hearing and believing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So therefore, here, right now, is declared unto you the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And that is that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And it's 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. Believe that today because the time is short all right so there you have it please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide and the grace be to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ bye bye for now